Have you ever wondered how your digital devices interact with the real world? It's a fascinating process, really. You see, our world is inherently analog. Sounds we hear, images we see, temperatures we feel, these are all continuous flowing signals. However, our digital devices like smartphones, computers and tablets, they operate in a world of ones and zeros, a world that's distinctly digital. Now how do these digital devices make sense of the analog world around them? And perhaps even more crucially, how do they communicate back to us in a language we can understand? The answer lies in two critical components known as ADCs and DACs. ADC stands for Analog to Digital Converter. It's like a digital interpreter for our devices. It samples the continuous analog signals like the sound of your voice during a phone call at regular intervals and assigns digital values to each sample. This process of converting continuous signals into discrete digital representations is known as sampling. The rate at which the ADC samples the analog signal is crucial as it determines the quality of the digital output. On the flip side, we have DAC, the Digital to Analog Converter. It performs the reverse operation, transforming the digital signals back into analog. So when you're listening to your favorite song on your phone, a DAC is working hard to convert those digital audio files into analog signals that your headphones or speakers can play back. Both ADC and DAC have something called resolution, which refers to the precision of the conversion. Higher resolution means a more precise conversion and thus a more accurate representation of the original signal. So ADC and DAC are the translators between the digital world of your devices and the real analog world. They serve as the bridge between these two vastly different realms, allowing them to interact and communicate. And that, my friends, is how the digital and analog worlds come together. Imagine a bridge. On one side, you have the continuous flowing world of analog signals, and on the other, you have the discrete structured world of digital signals. This bridge is the analog to digital converter or ADC. It's the gatekeeper that lets us translate the language of the analog world into the digital world. But how does it do that? Let's dive in. Picture a flowing river, the water level constantly changing. That's your analog signal. Now imagine taking snapshots of the river's water level at regular intervals. That's called sampling. The ADC samples the analog signal at a certain rate to get a discrete set of values. The frequency of these snapshots is what we call the sampling rate, and it determines how often we measure the analog signal. Now we have these snapshots, but they're still in the language of the analog world. We need to translate them. That's where quantization comes in. Quantization is like a translator that assigns digital codes to represent the amplitude of each snapshot. It's the process that turns the analog values into something the digital world can understand. But how precise is this translation? That's determined by the ADC's resolution. The resolution is like the translator's vocabulary size. A higher resolution means the ADC can represent a wider range of analog values with more precision. ADCs are like the unsung heroes of your everyday life. They're used in a plethora of applications data acquisition systems, sensors, audio processing, medical devices, communication systems, you name it. In communication systems, for example, ADCs help convert analog signals like your voice or video into digital signals that can be transmitted over the internet. So, next time you make a call or stream a video, remember the ADC. This bridge between the analog and the digital world is what makes it all possible. It enables your digital devices to understand and interact with the analog world around them. Without ADCs, your digital devices wouldn't be able to understand the analog world. Now, imagine you need to get back to the analog side from the digital side. For that, you need another bridge. This is where the Digital to Analog Converter, or DAC, comes into play. Acting as a bridge from the digital world back to the analog, DACs perform the reverse operation of ADCs. They take a sequence of digital values and reconstruct a continuous waveform, an analog signal. Let's delve a bit deeper into this process of reconstruction. Remember the sampling we discussed earlier with ADCs? Well, DACs essentially do the reverse. They take the digital samples and convert them into a continuous waveform. This reconstructed analog signal is an approximation, a close representation of the original continuous analog signal. Then there's the concept of resolution which is as crucial to DACs as it is to ADCs. The resolution of a DAC determines the precision of the reconstructed analog signal. 
the higher the resolution, the more accurate the representation of the original analog signal. It's like a painter with a finer brush. She can capture more detail and create a more accurate representation of the scene she is painting. But where are DACs used? Well, they're pretty much all around us. They're in our audio systems, converting digital audio signals from sources like CDs or digital audio files into analog signals for playback through speakers. They're in our video processing equipment, transforming digital video data into analog signals for display. They're in our communication systems, converting digital data into analog signals for transmission. They're in control systems, transforming digital control signals into analog signals to drive motors or other actuators. And they're in scientific instrumentation, turning digital measurement data into analog signals for display or further processing. So whether it's the music you listen to, the movies you watch, the calls you make, or the gadgets you use, there's a good chance a DAC is working behind the scenes, making it all possible. DACs complete the cycle, bringing the digital world back to the analog. ADC and DAC usually don't work alone. In most cases, they are part of a system, working together to convert signals back and forth. Let's dive into how this partnership operates. Imagine a system like an audio processing unit. Here, an ADC would take an analog audio signal, such as your voice picked up by a microphone, and convert it into a digital format. This digital data can then be manipulated, stored or transmitted with ease. But for us to hear the sound again, the digital data must be turned back into an analog signal. This is where the DAC steps in, converting the digital audio back into an analog form, allowing it to be played through speakers. This conversion between analog and digital isn't just a one and done process. It's continuous, and it's happening all the time in devices we use every day, from smartphones to music players to home theater systems. Between the ADC and DAC stages, the digital signal can undergo what's known as digital signal processing, or DSP. This is where the magic happens. In the digital domain, the signal can be manipulated in various ways, such as filtering noise or enhancing certain features before it's converted back to analog. However, timing and synchronization are crucial in systems that have both ADCs and DEs. The digital world operates in discrete time steps, while the analog world is continuous. So maintaining proper alignment between the analog and digital signals is vital to ensure the accuracy of the conversion processes. Another important factor to consider is latency, which is the delay introduced by the conversion processes. This can impact the real-time performance of the system. In applications where low latency is crucial, such as live music performances or video conferencing, efforts are made to minimize this delay. In essence, ADCs and DACs are the unsung heroes of our digital world. They are constantly working behind the scenes, converting signals back and forth, allowing us to enjoy the best of both the analog and digital worlds. ADC and DAC, working together, enable our digital devices to interact seamlessly with the analog world. So, why does all this matter? Why should you care about ADC and DAC? Let's take a moment to look back at everything we've covered. From the intricate process of ADCs converting continuous analog signals into discrete digital representations, to DACs performing the reverse operation, turning the digital back into the familiar analog signals we interact with in our daily lives. Think about this, every time you speak into your phone, an ADC is there, diligently sampling and quantifying your voice, turning it into a digital signal that can be transmitted across the globe. And when you receive a call, a DAC is hard at work, reconstructing those digital signals back into the analog sound waves that your ear can interpret. It's not just about phones though, it's about your home stereo, your digital thermometer, even your car's fuel injection system. All these devices and countless more rely on ADCs and DACs to bridge the gap between the digital and analog worlds. These converters are also the key enablers of digital signal processing, or DSP. This allows for various manipulations, filtering and enhancements to be made in the digital domain before the final conversion back to analog. This is how your music player can adjust the bass and treble, or how your digital camera can enhance the colors in a photo. And let's not forget about timing and synchronization, crucial aspects to ensure proper alignment and coherence between analog and digital signals. Latency, the time delay introduced by the conversion processes, is another important consideration, especially in applications where real-time performance is critical. 
So you see, ADCs and DCs are all around us, silently working in the background, making our digital lives possible. They are the unsung heroes, the translators, the bridges between two very different worlds, the analog and the digital. In the end, ADC and DAC are the unsung heroes that make our digital world possible. Without them, the digital devices we rely on every day wouldn't be able to understand or interact with the real analog world.